Okay, folks, it's 1132. And I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, it looks like we have 22 attendees right now. And that is um, not quite the number who registered, but let's go ahead and get started with the first part and hope others are able to join us as we go forward. So hello and welcome to this live online meeting of the Lockwood Interchange Reconstruction Project in Billings. Thank you for joining us. I'm Lisa Gray, the Public Involvement Lead for HDR. During this meeting, members of the Montana Department of Transportation and HDR project team will share project details and respond to your questions. We believe this open house and question answer session will allow us to engage with you, gather your comments and issues, and provide the project team with information to design and construct a better project. MDT is using online meetings to engage with the public rather than in-person meetings due to community health and safety concerns during the COVID-19 pandemic. We do look forward to meeting in person again. A question and answer session will be held immediately following the presentation. Feel free to write your questions now or at any time during the presentation and we will answer after the PowerPoint presentation concludes. In order to participate in the question and answer session, locate the QA button on the bottom of your screen. Click the button, which is highlighted in green on the PowerPoint slide, and remember to hit send after you type your question. As a reminder, this session is being recorded and a copy of this meeting and the presentation will be posted on the project's webpage early next week. The project team consists of consultants working collaboratively with the department. Our team members are going to introduce themselves. And Rod, you are up first. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Rod Nelson. I'm the Billings Dis District Administrator for the Montana Department of Transportation. Mike. And hello, everyone. My name is Mike Taylor. I'm the uh, Billings District Pre-Construction Engineer. Mark. Morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Mark Stude. I'm the MDT Consultant Project Engineer on this one. And Tim. Good morning. Tim Erickson with HDR, and I am the project manager for this project. You've already met me, Lisa Gray, and I'll be your point of contact for the project. Now I'm going to turn the meeting over to MDT's Rod. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Again, my name is Rod Nelson. Um, public involvement is a vital part of everything we do at MDT. Uh, so we're very appreciative of the opportunity today for sharing with you this very important study and for sharing with us your questions, comments, and concerns. Looking at the agenda for today's meeting, I want to start out by giving you a quick overview of the study. Then Tim will be presenting in more detail. The entire presentation should take about half an hour to complete. Uh, and then we'll open it up to questions and comments. So the Lockwood Interchange Study is led by MDT in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration, um, Yellowstone County and the City of Billings. MDT has contracted with HDR to be the lead project engineer and public information coordinator. The study is evaluating interchange and interstate improvements for both the Lockwood Interchange and I-90 between the Lockwood Interchange and Johnson Lane Interchange. The study is being performed to accommodate future traffic patterns and develop a more efficient interchange for all users, whether riding a bike, walking, or driving a vehicle. All operational issues will be addressed, including traffic backing up on the interchange ramps and out onto the interstate. I also want to briefly discuss a strategy that MDT adopted on all roadways in Montana. It's called Vision Zero. Vision Zero is a strategy to eliminate all traffic fatalities and serious injuries while increasing safe and healthy mobility for all. Tragically, in 2020, there were 212 fatalities in Montana roadways. Already in 2021, there's been 47 fatalities compared to 26 fatalities for the same time in 2020. You can see from the numbers, 2021 has had a very tragic start. 
To eliminate these fatalities and serious injuries on roads in Montana, we need everyone to do their part. We need everyone to be attentive. We need everyone to drive sober. We need everyone to drive to the conditions and not speed. And we need everyone to use their seatbelts. Please, together, we can save lives. So with that, now Tim is going to speak with you in more detail about the study. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. So the Lockwood Interchange Project is located adjacent to the city of Billings and Lockwood on I-90, and as Rod mentioned, between the Lockwood Interchange and the Johnson Lane Interchange. This project includes reconstruction of the Lockwood Interchange and associated improvements to US 87, both north and south of the existing interchange. To define an interchange, an interchange is a grade separation, in this case, US 87 over I-90, with ramps connecting the two roadways providing access to the cross streets. This project provides overall improvements as a final piece of a larger infrastructure system for the city or for the Billings area. Looking at a couple of those adjacent projects, many of you are probably aware of those ongoing projects along I-90 in the Billings area. I-90 Yellowstone River Bridges project, as shown in red on the screen, that is a project that is widening of I-90 to three lanes in each direction between the 27th Street Interchange and the Lockwood Interchange. Also to the east of this project is the Johnson Lane Interchange. That is shown in blue on the screen. The Johnson Lane Interchange project replaces the interchange at Johnson Lane and is one of the segments of the overall larger Billings Bypass project. So this project, the Lockwood Interchange Reconstruction Project, again, provides the final segment of a larger infrastructure improvements for the Billings community. Each of these projects have their respective websites on MDT's webpage, and I encourage all of you and others to stay involved viewing those web pages and grab information that are available on those websites. The existing Lockwood Interchange is what is considered a diamond interchange. As you can see on the image to the right, the diamond interchange is defined by the interchange having a single ramp in each quadrant, diagonally connecting I-90 to US-87. Existing US-87 within the project limits has two travel lanes in each direction. And similarly, I-90 within the project limits also has two travel lanes in each direction existing. There is an existing sidewalk that exists along the east side of US-87 to the north of the interchange. And there are no pedestrian facilities currently south of the interchange within the project limits. In summary, this project includes widening of I-90 to three lanes in each direction, again, between the Lockwood interchange and the Johnson Lane interchange. Reconstruction of Lockwood interchange itself to improve traffic operations. And bike ped improvements are included along US-87 which provides access through the interchange between Lockwood and Billings. The improvements and modifications to I-90 include a third lane in each direction, which is considered an auxiliary lane between the two interchanges. An auxiliary lane is a travel lane that is added between on-ramps of one of the interchanges and terminates at the off-ramp of the adjacent interchange. The auxiliary lane makes it easier for drivers to merge and exit interstate traffic. I-90 will be widened to the inside or towards the median to accommodate the third travel lane. This eliminates right-of-way needs for I-90 improvements and also avoids impacts to irrigation and drainage crossings. A concrete barrier will be installed within the median to provide positive protection between the, various, between the two different directions of travel. The design team performed an alternative analysis for the Lockwood interchange itself to look at what's going to be the most practical uh, improvement solution for that interchange. And again, an interchange is a great separated crossing that includes adjacent ramps and connections to provide access to and from the cross street. A few of those interchange alternatives that we have looked at throughout the study so far was a diamond interchange. So that's very similar to the existing, inter the existing interchange but would have improvements such as signalized intersections, additional lanes, and a larger bridge to accommodate future demand. Another alternative is a diverging diamond interchange, which is similar to a diamond interchange, 
with a crossover to direct all traffic to the left side of the roadway when you're going through the interchange. A single point urban interchange or SPUI, as shown in the top picture on the, on the screen, that is similar to the King Avenue interchange in Billings. Uh, that alternative, actually all ramps direct traffic towards the center or single point, hence the name, of the interchange. And then finally, the other alternative looked at was a roundabout interchange shown in the bottom picture. Recent examples are Miles City interchange and rocker interchanges throughout Montana. The results of the alternative analysis was that a diverging diamond interchange or DDI is the preferred alternative for this location. A DDI provides the most improvements of traffic operations and safety. The measures of effectiveness include vehicle delay as well as level of service. A DDI improves safety by removing left turn movement conflicts. This means that left turns both on and off the interchange do not cross opposing traffic. This allows for simpler signal phasing, meaning that it gives longer green lights to traveling public to enhance capacity. This alternative also had minimal environmental impacts and provided opportunities for improved pedestrian facilities. As mentioned, a DDI is based on the standard diamond interchange with the main difference, including a crossover to direct traffic to the left side of the roadway through the interchange. US 87 traffic will actually cross over at intersections outside of the bridge portion of the interchange itself, intuitively channelizing vehicles to the left side of the roadway. This is done with signing, curbing, and other channelization that will easily direct the traffic through the interchange. In fact, federal highways, FHWA studies have noted that a DDI can be more intuitive than a standard diamond. Also with the, with the merging, of, merging of traffic onto the left side of the roadway, merges and additional turning movements yield to a single direction of travel due to those crossovers. This enhances safety and operations of the interchange itself. Overall, the DDI reduces delay and increases interchange capacity. In fact, current conditions of the interchange itself, of the existing Lockwood interchange itself, directly point to the benefits of a DDI. There are high volume, including lots of trucks making left-hand turns either on or off the interchange itself, which lend itself to some of the uh, benefits of a DDI. So also with this interchange, new signing will be used to guide traffic through the interchange. It is difficult for wrong way movements on this type of interchange. Traffic signals, as mentioned, would actually have two, what's called two phases, reducing the overall time that vehicles are stopped. And again, this provides longer green time for traffic as well as corresponding pedestrian movements. This particular interchange location would provide for dual left turn lanes for the eastbound off ramp. And you can see that in the lower part of the graphic that's on the screen. This is indicated with two lanes next to each other that allow for turning traffic left onto US 87 from I-90. Also, as shown in the far up part of, uh, upper portion of the uh, image on the screen, dual right turn lanes for the westbound off-ramp. So this would be for two lanes next to each other for turning traffic coming from I-90 that want to turn onto US 87 to go towards the Metro. And this alternative also is able to eliminate traffic queuing or traffic being backed up onto I-90, especially during events, especially events that might occur in the area. Additional improvements for the interchange include reconstruction of US-87 from south of Coburn Road up through the north frontage road, north of the interchange. The reconfiguration of the interchange again to a DDI configuration, diverging diamond interchange. Reconstruction of the existing bridge over I-90, and that existing bridge would be uh, constructed to accommodate future widening of I-90 if a future widening would occur down the road. And it also improves and extends pedestrian facilities through the Lockwood interchange. So specifically, focusing in on pedestrian and bicycle accommodations and improvements, the, the accommodations planned for this project include a 10 foot wide shared use pedestrian facility through the interchange, 
On a DDI configuration, this is accommodated through the center of the interchange, as shown in the image on the screen. This reduces overall conflicts between pedestrians and vehicles, especially with the free flow turning movements within the interchange. As you might be able to tell in that image, this 10 foot wide multi-use path through the center of the interchange is also protected by barriers on either side, providing positive protection between the non-motorized users and the vehicles through the interchange. Also as part of this project with the improvements along US 87 as part of the interchange improvements, a 10 foot shared use pedestrian facility would extend to Coburn Road, as well as through North Frontage Road, providing an opportunity to connect future paths to Metro Park and future bike ped connections within Lockwood. Other proposed modifications with this interchange alternative at the North Frontage Road, including a dedicated left turn lane. So this would be for traffic on North Frontage Road wanting to turn left onto US 87 towards I-90, and also extending the right turn lane of the North Frontage Road, which would be for traffic on North Frontage Road wanting to turn right to access the Metro, towards the Metro. And those improvements are made for uh, enhancing uh, future capacity needs of the overall area. Coburn Road, which is shown in the bottom part of the image on the screen, due to its proximity, existing proximity to the existing interchange as well as the proposed interchange, safety improvements are needed at that intersection, especially as uh, more and more vehicles are, are uh, traveling through this area. Coburn Road would actually be converted to a three quarters access, meaning that right turn lanes and left turn lanes from US 87 onto Coburn Road will be allowed, but a left turn lane from Coburn Road onto US 87 would not be allowed with three quarter access. The design team is currently looking at options to accommodate those left turns, which would include possibly sending that traffic from Coburn Road that wants to turn left onto US 87, access along Rosebud Lane and Lockview Lane to get access onto US 87 at a safer location along the, within the project. So right away acquisition is required with this project, mainly due to ramp widening and modifications for the interchange. I-90 improvements will not require right away acquisition. So the little bit of right away acquisition that is required will be along the ramp modifications primarily. A few of the improvements along US 87 may also require additional right away. In our design team, we are looking at utilizing retaining walls and other options that could potentially reduce the amount of right away required. The proposed right of way will be refined as the design progresses and our design team will also be reaching out to the individual landowners that are potentially impacted to discuss potential impacts and potential concerns associated with that. Of note, the right of way acquisition will all be partial acquisitions and does not include taking of full parcels or relocations with this project. So as we look ahead, the overall project schedule and next steps with the project. The alternative analysis and preliminary design that has led up to this public meeting was completed at the end of 2020. Today's is the very first public meeting uh, overall for this project, and there are there will be other opportunities and additional public meetings in the future uh, associated with this project as the design progresses. There is a risk analysis and project feasibility task associated with this project that the design team is anticipating completing next month in April 2021. And then moving into final design with the anticipated design being completed sometime in 2023 or 2024. So again, that shows that for the next several years, there are going to be opportunities for additional public meetings and additional input and encourage all of you to attend those meetings and participate and watch the websites to, to continue to be engaged with this project. Funding is currently not uh, is not programmed for this project itself. So depending on availability of funding, as well as sequencing of other planned projects, construction could begin as early as 2024 or 2025. Okay, a big thank you to all of our presenters, especially Tim, who is pulling double duty today because one of our presenters woke up sick this morning, so thank you. 
As pre previously mentioned, MDT will use public input from this online meeting as the project moves forward and will continue to work closely with the community and other stakeholders. We hope you will stay involved with this with us. Now we'd like to open the meeting to questions. Remember, in order to participate in the question answer session, please locate the QA button on the bottom of your screen. Type in the question and click the blue send button. And we have no questions at this point. So if you have a question, go ahead and send it in to us. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much. Okay, first question. What crossing accommodations will be made to get people walking and biking to the shared use path in the middle of the road? I'm curious about the types of crossings and the frequency of them. And Tim, I think we'll bounce this over to you. You bet, thanks. Um, great question and the, the crossings for the bicycles and pedestrians uh, associated with those facilities to get to the center of the interchange are very similar to uh, crosswalks. Uh, and in fact, they are standard crosswalks just like you would see crossing of, a, of an intersection. Of note, the benefit associated with getting the pedestrians to the center is actually the pedestrians cross one direction of traffic instead of two directions of traffic, which you see crossing on a, on a typical intersection. Thank you. The next question is, what are the total costs of the pedestrian facilities discussed? We have actually not broken out the exact uh, costs themselves associated with pedestrian facilities. Important to note overall with this project um, is that with the existing facilities there, improvements want to be made uh, to accommodate uh, enhancements to those existing facilities, and that's why they're included with the project. Okay, what is the projected date for the Colson to Johnson intersection to start breaking ground? Um, Mark or Mike? Anybody want to take that one? So I'm not exactly sure which, uh, if they're asking about the Johnson Lane project or, or this, this project. Um, Tim addressed the, uh, the projected uh, earliest construction for the Lockwood interchange, which would include uh, improvements at the Colson interchange. Um, and that's uh, you know, 20, around 2024. That answer your question. If, you, if, you, if you're asking about Johnson Lane, um, maybe you could clarify that with an additional question. And Catherine, um, one of the things that you could do if you go to the Lockwood website on the very right hand side of the page under links, um, we have an interactive map which shows you all three of the projects that are contiguous to each other. And it also has a link for each website. So you could get the most up-to-date information from all three projects by simply clicking the link. And then if you wanted, you could also sign up for information from all three projects to come to you by doing that. So um, if, if this isn't exactly what you were after, Catherine Dove, please um, send another question and we'll get, we'll get it right. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. Okay, the next question is, I have a concern for the left-hand turn off Coburn Road. Where would the access be? And we're gonna to go to Tim for that. Sure. So we are reviewing alternatives with that and discussing with the county and others um, to discuss some of the options. But one of the options being discussed at this time, um, it would be for if uh, you're traveling in the uh, north, bound direction or towards US 87 on Coburn Road, you would turn right onto Rosebud Lane. And then improvements would be required to both Rosebud Lane and Lockview Lane with this alternative to turn it into um, more of an urban roadway section itself to accommodate this, but then would turn to Lockview and then the access to US 87 would be where uh, Lockview, Lockview Lane uh, currently has the intersection with US 87. Okay, thank you, Tim. What are the pedestrian improvements planned from the east side of Yellowstone to Lockwood Road or the interchange? Um, Tim, do you wanna take a shot at that? Sure. So the pedestrian improvements, uh, there's a few, a few different projects uh, and in particular the Expo and First Intersection Project. 
that currently does have some pedestrian improvements uh, planned to go up to the Yellowstone Bridge itself. And this project has at least from the North Frontage Road to get through the, inter the Lockwood Road interchange. And so there are discussions ongoing about how to make that connection happen in the future and what does that look like to provide that access from the Metro all the way through the Lockwood interchange. Okay, thank you, Tim. Next up is, will the sidewalk be extended to the Lockwood H87E intersection from the new interchange? At this time, we do not have sidewalks being extended to the Lockview and Highway 87 East intersection. Um, that is outside the project limits currently with this project. Um, so there are no sidewalks being planned to extend to that intersection. I think it's fair to say though, if you um, have comments uh, that are outside of our uh, project area, we will still take those and, and get them to the right folks so that they know that you have that concern. Is that fair? Okay. Oh, Catherine. Okay, so Catherine actually meant Coburn. I was wondering about a more targeted date. Does that make sense, Tim? We kind of, we're coming back to a second question. Yeah, so exactly um, with Mike and Mike, feel free to chime in more. Um, so as mentioned, the, the overall funding for this project, which includes the Lockwood interchange reconstruction and the reconstruction of I-90 um, through these project limits hasn't been identified yet. Um, but the plan would be that the construction would start at the earliest of 2024 or 2025 when funding would become available as well as uh, finding a good opportunities with other projects going on. And so with, with Coburn, the overall interchange improvements and I-90 uh, improvements between Lockwood interchange and Johnson Land interchange, the earliest that would start would be 2024, 2025. Okay, so the question is, can you show us the bike pad crossing in your aerial? Um, does the bike pad facility features meet with best practice guidelines? I think that would be at NACTO. I have concerns regarding not being able to turn left from Coburn. Sounds like it would be horribly fast moving from pictures and less like a Lockwood community friendly street than a highway going through the center of town. So Tim, I'm gonna pass that to you, but in the meantime, what slide would you like us to move back to? Yeah, I think slide 14 could show those, um, hopefully show them fairly well. Um, it does reflect the pedestrian facilities kind of shown gray or you know similar to a concrete, 10 foot wide concrete path through there. Um, and you see that on the, on the upper part of the screen is actually north of the interchange, and then the lower part of the screen is south of the interchange. And so north of the interchange, you would take the existing sidewalk that exists today, improves that to a 10-foot wide path, and then enters in through the interchange, gets to the center of the interchange to go through the interchange, and then exits uh, the pedestrian facilities to the west side of the interchange, lining up with Coburn Road, which then provide connections to future bike ped facilities there. In regards to the design uh, meeting the best practices guidelines, so the, the, the design absolutely does meet uh, current guidelines, which is through both MDT, FHWA, um, and, and the general industry. And then the other part of that question. Um, I have concerns regarding not being able to turn left from Coburn. Sounds like it would be horribly fast moving and less like a Lockwood community friendly street than a highway going through the center of town. And feel free on that on that comment, feel free to provide some additional information if you want through a through a comment and we can follow up later on about that as well. Thank you, Tim. Okay, there are many road projects that may impact residents in the Heights. This project, Main Street, IBL, proposal to reduce Fourth Avenue to six to three lanes. How carefully are the different groups coordinating? And um, I'm going to toss that over to Mike. Okay. Um, yeah. So coincidentally, we just had a meeting with uh, MPO yesterday, and we discussed some of the projects that uh, the city of Billings, the county, and, and the MDT are, are working on. So there's been some pretty good. Uh, coordination. Of course, we meet uh, routine regularly with uh, with the city of Billings um, 
and, and the county PCC uh, TAC committee. Um, so uh, we're fully aware of, of each other's projects and trying to co coordinate uh, with each other on those as, as best we can. Thank you, Michael. Does this construction coincide with Johnson Lane as well, or does this start at a later date? Um, I'll take that one, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so so uh, Johnson Lane uh, is uh, nearing the completion of the design phase. Uh, right now it's anticipated uh, to go to contract in 2022. Uh, it'll be about a two year project. Um, which puts a completion about uh, 2024, which is about the time uh, this that this Lockwood interchange would be the earliest that uh, this one would uh, be able to go to contract uh, if, if we were able to fund it at that time. Thank you. And Rob, I'm gonna encourage you again to go um, to the websites because our most updated construction information will be there and on the Johnson Lane, the I-90 Yellowstone and the Lockwood project, there is an interactive map that will allow you to move, sort of toggle really easily between websites and um, the updated um, schedule information will be posted on all three websites as soon as it's available. So thank you for your question. Okay, has there been any discussion of possible plantings or zero escaping along the border of the bike ped pathway. What is the design team proposing to make this space appealing to commuters? And that will go to Mr. Tim. Yeah, we have been uh, having discussions about what opportunities do exist for that from an aesthetics perspective, landscaping perspective. And so, I mean, if there are some ideas that the community has some input on that, um, obviously there are uh, different constraints from a safety perspective as well as maintenance needs to be considered and other things associated with that um, and the costs associated with them but um, if there are different ideas and thoughts that the community has please uh, please uh, let us know and provide comments on the project and alex you can email comments um, to directly to lisa.gray at hdrinc.com and we will make sure the project team gets um, your comments so thank you um, the next one is, are the bike pet crossings signal controlled? And we'll go back to Tim for that. Yeah, so the majority of the bike pet crossings are signal controlled. There are uh, currently in our, in our preliminary design, the, any of them that cross a, sing, a single lane ramp, uh, which is very consistent with interchanges throughout Montana and throughout the country, those ones are not uh, currently, currently being planned to be signal controlled. If they cross, uh, more than one lane of traffic, so any of them crossing into the center of the interchange itself or crossing the uh, dual turn lanes, as mentioned earlier, those are signal controlled. Um, and again, as I mentioned, one of the benefits of a DDI uh, for the pedestrian movements is the uh, more simple phasing of the signals. And so instead of having um, Part, part of the signals be left turn arrows before it goes to green and other things, you actually have just dedicated green time that's longer, that's more beneficial for vehicular traffic, but also provides longer opportunities for pedestrians to cross those same segments of the roadway. Okay, and um, we only have one more. Oh, no, more coming in, here we go. So uh, thank you, Kathy, um, she wants us to understand her, her comment is that she'd like us to work with the communities and utilize NACTO guidelines. So thank you for that. Um, next is with raised walls for the 10 foot path in the center of the interchange, who would be responsible for snow removal as the sun may not be able to melt, melt it as quickly without the walls. So I think we can go to Mike or Rod with that. Yeah, so this is Rod, and Thank great you, Rod. question. Um, you know, that's that's something that we're always dealing with is snow removal during the winter months, and MDT would be responsible for snow removal on the interchange. Thank you. Um, and the next one is um, 
we would like to see the maximum level of communication uh, and collabor co collaboration early and often. So um, that's a, a great comment. And um, we ask you to stay in touch with us as, as well as we will stay in touch with you. So thank you for that. Okay, I've got no more questions. Let's wait a second or two um, to make sure everybody gets their questions answered. Um, I think right now we can just say thank you again for participating. We realize that everybody's quite busy um, and we appreciate, oh, Michael, you're very kind, thank you. Um, thanks for joining us, all of you, really, honestly, this is great. And it's, a, it's been a great uh, group of people here today. Um, one more question. Only getting bike ped traffic across the interchange leaves no place for them to go, but back on the road to go east to, to Old Harden Road. Um, Tim, can you respond to that? Yeah, sure. No, it's a good question and a good comment. And again, um, just with the project limits that we have, but we are at preliminary design. So um, as we continue those outreach, um, both with community of Lockwood stakeholders, as well as the county and others, um, can be a topic of conversation. Okay, and Vern, you're not seeing a place to sign up for notifications. There should be a comment at the very bottom of the first page of the website. I can ask our web designers to move that up. Um, I have your email now. If you signed up with us using your email, um, you will automatically become part of our notifications list. So um, anything that we send out in the future, you'll get. Uh, so thank you for the comment. Oh, thank you too. And um, I'll, I'll check that out and make sure we can get a link higher on the webpage. Okay, so Rod, did you want any closing comments for us as, as we wait for one or two more questions? Sure, you know, you know, once again, um, we really do appreciate everybody joining us today. We very much appreciate the fact that that people are um, invested and they want to know about what's going on in the communities. They want to be a part of it. They want to make sure that what is done is is done well and it is what the community wants. And that is what we want as well. So um, just want to express my appreciation and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Rod. So we've we've got one more question, and as they trickle in, we'll continue to take them. Um, we're concerned about the alterations on Old Harden Road and how they will impact access to Burger King. How do we discuss these changes with your team? So, um, so you you you're now on our list, and we know that you have that concern. Tim, did you want to speak to that briefly, or or we'll get back to um, Evan about that? Yeah, and if Mike or Rod want to chime in, because I, um, if I'm not mistaken, that question is likely related to the Johnson Lane interchange. Mm. Um, and with this Thank project you. being focused on the Lockwood interchange, um, it is um, it is difficult to uh, even for all of us to keep all those projects uh, separate. As uh, this one's focused in on where US 87, also known as the I-90 business loop, crosses I-90. Um, and does not include the Johnson Lane interchange, which would be the east part of Lockwood, which I believe this question is coming from. So I don't know if Mike or Rod, you wanna follow up on that? Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, so as, as with any uh, adjacent landowners or, or uh, properties that are impacted with the construction projects, we uh, once we enter the uh, right-of-way phase, we'll, we'll definitely be in one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, contact with uh, those affected with the project and, and work out, uh, work through some of these issues that you're you're bringing up, uh, uh, especially as it relates to um, access to and from and changes due to the project. Um, so that uh, on Johnson Lane, we're just uh, really early in the in the right of way acquisitions uh, phase. So um, you should be getting contacted by by MDT, a right of way agent, uh, in the near future uh, to address some of those concerns. And Evan, I know the public involvement specialist on that project, so I will um, send her your comment and make sure that it's in front of her so it's also in front of the project team. Okay, pedestrian traffic coming from Lockwood to Billings would cross the off coming traffic with no light and exiting the intersection, I'm sorry, let's try that again, and exiting the interchange would have no light. So that's for Tim. 
Yeah, so that that is correct um, based on what we currently have shown um, because that is a single lane of traffic for that exit ramp that is uh, eastbound exiting I-90 uh, wanting to turn right to go towards Lockwood um, and uh, very common and very consistent with uh, interchanges and pedestrians crossing interchanges uh, throughout Montana as well as the uh, as well as the country with that but you know at, as the design progresses and we look at uh, potential traffic volumes and if there's a you know indication that uh, too big of a safety concern there could be an opportunity to uh, relook at that crossing itself. Thank you, Tim. Okay, so we have no open questions at this time. If you have a question to type in, we're gonna give you a few more seconds here, a minute or two uh, to type in the question, otherwise we'll wrap up. And um, we have another meeting this afternoon at 4.30. Uh, if you say, oh shoot, I meant to ask this question, you can come back at us again at 4.30. Um, otherwise, contact me and uh, we'll get your questions answered. All right, it sounds like we're good to go. Um, team, thank you very much for all your hard work this last week. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to work with all of you. And public, thank you, stakeholders, for um, joining us. Okay, Kathy, I'd like to look more closely at these video, at these images videos if they are posted online. So the PowerPoint presentation will be posted online at the same time the videos of both public meetings will be posted online. Okay. And and then Kathy, if you if there's something you can't quite see, just let me know. Okay, I think um, having no more questions at this time. We're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thanks again to the public. We realize you are busy and we do appreciate uh, your input. We think it makes uh, our work better. So have a lovely afternoon. Thank or Yes, I guess we're in afternoon now. Have a lovely afternoon and thank you.